Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash in England. Jacob, one of the believers from the UK, had the question, I would like to know why Jesus called Judas friend in Matthew 26, and also why the king, meaning Jesus, called the man friend who was at the wedding feast in Matthew 22, verse 12, but was not dressed in wedding clothes. There are three reasons Jesus addressed people as friends. The case of Judas Iscariot, however, is not the same exactly as the case of the parable of the wedding. Let's begin with Judas. In Hebrew, and remember the New Testament is taking Hebrew terms from the Old Testament, spoken in Aramaic, and then translated into Greek. The Hebrew term for friend is haver, haver. But it's not just friend as in English. <laughs> haver could mean member. Like a, even in modern Hebrew, a haver could be a member, a member of a political party, a member of a, of a synagogue, a member of an organization, a haver. Okay. Haverut. Um, friendness or uh, a, a union. Psalm 133, brothers dwell together in unity. But Haver can be almost the same as brother, a brother member of something. Okay? So part of the reason Jesus used the term friend as it's translated from the Greek is because translated from the Hebrew via Aramaic, it would be the term haver, which has a broader meaning than the term friend in English. That would apply certainly to Judas. He was a member of the club of the apostles of the followers of Jesus. He was a member, not just friend, but member of there. Okay. <coughs> There's that. But Jesus was also making some reference to the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6. I'll read it. And one will say to him, what are these wounds between your arms? Then he will say, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Jesus was alluding to that verse. That concerns Judas. Now the wedding parable in Matthew is similar. Not the same, but similar. The term haver applies. It doesn't mean friend necessarily. It means member. It could be a member of a household, a member of the same community, okay? A member of the same community, okay? It's a more general, more encompassing term in Hebrew than in English. Okay. So you have that aspect. But it relates to something else. Jesus told his disciples, I call you my friends. The servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I don't call you just my servants. You're my friends. He makes us privy to certain knowledge and information, okay? The real friends of Jesus are the ones who have the wedding garment. They become privy. This other guy did not have it. He was either a backslider or he was never saved to begin with. Of course, it's a parable. It's a hypothetical. But those are the essential reasons. 
The term Haver in Hebrew, when we translate it via Aramaic and Greek into English, does not mean the same thing as friendship. It is sort of a cross between friendship and brotherhood, which is Achtut, or joint oneness. The term is Haverut. A Jewish gathering, a social gathering, or a social religious gathering, say a house group, which even some Jewish believers have their own version of, it, is called a Havera, Havera, Hevra, Hevra. Now this reward is where you have Haverut with the Haverim, with the with the members, who are your friends. But it also relates to the Hebrew word for company, hevra, a pharmaceutical company. Uh, hevra, <laughs> hevra rochachut, pharmaceutical company, uh, electric company, hevra hashmali, hevra, a company. Okay, it's the same root you find with Jacob. <clears throat> when he wrestles with the angel of the Lord at Peniel at the book of Jabbok and confronts his brother Esau and thinks Esau is going to kill him. And he divides his family into two camps, Mahanim, Mahanim, <coughs> Mahane, two camps. Ha, ha. Okay. Uh, but the root is again, Haver, Haver. It's not always easy to translate a Hebrew word into English in terms of the exact meaning, particularly not an ancient biblical Hebrew word. But when you go via two other languages, Aramaic and then into Greek, it becomes very challenging to get it exactly right. The term friend, as used in the Jewish culture that Jesus was in, does not mean exactly what it means to us in English. It could be better understood more accurately as member. Member. Thank you so much for your question. God bless. Mm -hmm.